Hi, my friend, Pat Sloan here for my daily video. And today is my sort of roundup for the month of where I'm at with my word of the year, which is do. Uh, you know, I have had, uh, I think, a really good year so far doing things. I've made it a super big focus of everything that's going on. I've made it a point uh, because I have these daily videos that I'm constantly trying to keep on top of what I'm working on and trying to work on things uh, very consistently so that I can share them here, which has been sort of a side benefit of having daily videos. It's like, ah, oh, I need to have something to show. Um, but it's, it's also very fulfilling to me because I actually feel like I am making more things uh, than in years past when I did a lot of travel. When I did a lot of travel, I didn't often sew when I was on the road. And so when I got home, I had a lot of work piled up and I still didn't get a lot of sewing in. You know, it just felt like it wasn't at that level. And since I've been able to start sewing again, which has only been a couple of months ago after I broke my wrists and they got, they both of them got to the point where I could start sewing again. It's only been about three or four months, only since like maybe December. So I have had a, you know, a very short period working on this, but I'm super pleased with it. Uh, one of the things that I'm doing, doing, do, doing. <laughs> it's amazing how much you say your word once you start thinking about it. So I'm, I have a, an article that I will recap every month and that is today. So you can go over to my website. The link is down in the description box. And while you're there, click that subscribe button so that we can spend more time together. So you'll always know when I have something new coming up. So the, the focus last month in March uh, was to create a habit. And I've talked about this a few different times and that just did not work for me in March. In March, my mindset was not there to create a new habit on anything. I, you know, to be honest, I was just struggling just to keep going with what I already had. And I have enough that I didn't really need something new. So for March, I didn't really approach the word do other than continuing to make things on a really regular schedule. Uh, and, and I didn't expand it past that. But for some reason now, <laughs> I feel much more uplifted. I feel like in a different spot. So this month I'm, I have the cross stitch that I'm uh, going to do every month, but the other, every day, rather every day, cross stitch every day, marking it on my calendar. Remember, I've got my calendar, marking it on there. But the other thing that I'm looking at is I want to start planning my flowers that I'm going to have outside. In the past, because we did so much travel, I couldn't, I, you know, we turned the water off when we left. And so, you know, it was hard for somebody to water unless they were actually staying in our house. Uh, so, you know, it, the plants were not uh, very easy to have. You know, I, we would be gone for a week and a lot of things just didn't survive in the middle of the summer that didn't do very well. So I had very limited garden. And years ago, when I worked in an office, when I worked corporate, I had a beautiful garden. Uh, I worked on it a lot and, and it was very organic. I just sort of put things in here, put things in there. I didn't really have a big plan. But since now I'm kind of starting almost from scratch in, in a lot of ways, I'm thinking about doing, my word do of the year, do more, uh, do a little plan for each of the places. Like I'm looking at a spot saying, what do I want to see here? When I look out this window, what do I want to see? When I look at the front of my house, what do I want that to look like? Uh, and that's a little bit more work, it takes a little bit more effort, but it's also a very hygge thing. It's very warm and cozy. And the hygge is what I'm also trying to weave through what I do to do things that are nurturing, that feel like uh, they're, they're cozy, you know, they're cozy for, for me. So flowers are a big deal. I bought some gladiola bulbs. Uh, if you're not familiar with gladiolas, they are kind of long and spiky. That's them. They, you know, they, they tend to have a long thing. You get them a lot of bouquets because they're tall. And years ago, so here's like, I got some bulbs. 
they're bulbs. <laughs> uh, years ago I had some of these and they, they did well here. So I thought, well, I'm just gonna get some bulbs so that I can, mostly I use them for cutting. I would cut them because there's not that many of them uh, and, and bring them in the house and enjoy them or whatever. So I have to now find a place to put the bulbs and uh, out my office window, right outside the window that's by my desk, I am going to put um, some big pots. So it's a total shade put some impatias and maybe a few other things that are shade loving that have color and I'm going to put a bench and some of the pots on there but not in the ground nothing in the ground right there I'm going to just try it in with some pots just so it's like right outside my window so I have color uh, that's the kind of thing that I'm looking at and those are all uh, <laughs> They're all plans. They're plans for me. They're things I personally am doing just for me. Uh, it's not like anybody's going to come over here and see these flowers under my windowsill in the back of my in my backyard. It's just for me. <laughs> so let's talk a little bit of quilting too, because uh, you know, with the do, I now I have the I got the one UFO done, the main street I showed you yesterday. The next one I'm going to do is the red and white, and so I have it ready. I have it trimmed. The thing is I have to find, I think I'm going to do just solid red binding on it. This is with the two and a half inch squares that I, you know, make another quilt, make a quilt while you're doing something else. Uh, so here is, here it is, isn't that gorgeous? This will eventually I'm gonna hang on the B side of my table where I'm, I sit on the, when I do some of the videos on that back side, this is gonna go up there. I just love how it shimmers with all of the different fabrics in it. And I'll, when it's done, I'll get a picture outside. I did the newsprint, the wide back with newsprint. So there's the backing that has the newsprint. So I need to cut some binding. That is <clears throat> my next to do is the binding for that. Okay. And I also got a few cute things in and I just have to share them with you. And then at the end, I have a Q and A. But this, oh, I need to stand up again because this is easier to see standing up. I got this panel a little bit ago and I hadn't showed it to you yet, but it comes in both gray, it's, it's apricot and ash is the name of the line. And I'll link everything's down below. And it's also at my website today uh, at my article. So apricot and ash has the, Corey Yoder did these two panels. Look at this. So I wanted to show you that panels are not always just like a baby thing that's just one rectangle. Pan, this is a panel of squares. And, I, and they're to look like applique. Uh, it comes on a white background uh, as another option. This is the gray and the whole line has this peach and gray and green and cream. So those are the colors for the fabric line. I think this is the coolest thing ever. I wanna cut it up and I might like it as like, like the big centers of little log cabin blocks or just doing sashing around them even would be pretty and make sort of a, a faux, <laughs> a cheater cloth. They call them cheater cloths too. Have you heard that term before? Uh, there, there was a term when they have a print, like a quilt printed out like this. I mean, you literally could make, get more of these panels and you could just sew them together and have it quilted and it will look like this beautiful applique quilt on your bed. It would just be fabulous. So you have to go take a look at that because it is, it is really darn, darn cool. I like it. The other thing that I got in that I wanna show you today is uh, these, I got a package of different solids and in white, they're, they're all the Bella solids, but you can see the shading, all the different shadings. This is fabulous for matching because if I wanted to match white to this, you know, I, you know, not all of these whites are created equal. Some are more, this one actually has, gets down into a little bit of a gray and some are really pristine white, you know, and they're like, it just might be just a little bit too white. You might see something like a little bit more in the middle, maybe not so creamy, like some of them are a little bit more ivory. So this is a great way to match up solids uh, for using. And then you actually have a usable piece. These are fat quarters, so. You could do a test piece with it, but I'm going to cut all of those. I'm going to cut a swatch off of all of those and then take a Sharpie and write the number on it. 
and then I have it so that I can use it as a reference. And I'll put, I'll put it with that other panel I have with the dots on it uh, that will let me have all the different solids at my fingertips. Whoops, my chair went way back there, didn't it? All right, so we had um, a Q&A. So had one question from a couple people, actually, which is interesting because I think it's an interesting question. But Darla and Peggy both asked this question. Uh, how frequently do you de-stash or get rid of, uh, um, one of them used the word dead projects, <laughs> old projects, leftovers. Um, so this is sort of a whole realm of things. I, I think of this as uh, projects that you no longer want to work on. You know, so it's a UFO, an unfinished object, a project that you stopped working on, have not worked on in a very long time. And every time you look at it, you're like, uh, I don't want to work on it. Uh, so that would be something like a, that would be like, I call a dead project. <laughs> it's, it's not what you're just not going to ever fall back in love with it and want to spend your time on it. But you also might have fabric. You might have fabric that you've fallen in out of love with, or maybe you don't keep a lot of small pieces. You have a leftover square from a layer cake, um, a couple of charm pack squares, and maybe you don't do um, scrap quilts and you don't keep those. Or you just might have some fat quarters that came in a bundle that you're like, you know, I didn't use them for the project. They don't really go with the other things I normally make because um, it was a gift or, you know, a different kind of fabric than look that you usually use. And so these are just sort of like leftovers or like stuff that you're just not going to use. So how often do I personally get rid of these things? Um, for fabric, it's probably about twice a year that I'm, you know, look in my bins and uh, have to reduce down what's in there so that the, the stuff, the new stuff can fit in because I only have so much space for, for things. I don't have unlimited space and my space is small. For the projects, uh, I probably do, I, I do them once a year, but probably a very active, deep dive is maybe every couple of years on those dead, dead, you know, the, um, the ones I'm not in love with anymore. You know, the projects that have just been, I've been holding on to them for years, still don't have a love for them. And, and, and it takes you a couple of years to, I think, know that. You know, you don't know like the next year maybe. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you know right away. Sometimes you're working on it, right? Did you ever have that? You're working on the project, you're like, I, this is just not speaking to me anymore. I started it, but I don't like it. You know, maybe Jill will like it better than me. I'll give it to Jill. Uh, you know, just <clears throat> as soon as you know, you can get rid of it. But to consciously go back through what I have, you know, maybe every, every couple, you know, to every other year it might be, I look at that group and say, okay, let's get rid of that. Like I have a group of tops right now. And because I made the list for the, for, um, you know, quilt tops for charity, you know, now I have places that I can send my quilt tops to. And I know I have a few quilt tops that I've made from sew alongs or, or projects with another designer, um, or just an alternate colorway. And I just, not going to spend the time or effort to make those into a quilt. I just don't don't have an interest in that. So those need to be packaged up and and sent sent along to a new home. That <laughs> so that's a good question. Uh, you know, and you can um, for fabric. I mean, if you just keep a bag that you know somebody you can give the fabric to, like your guild or a friend or um, some other organization that will take it, you can just leave a bag in your in your space if you want and just put the fabric in there. I used to put scraps in there like that for my mother-in-law and her friends because they made charity quilts. And so as I came across something, I'm like, okay, and I would just throw it in the bag. And then the next time I went to see her, I took her the bag of fabric scraps. Um, that worked really well back when when uh, I could do that. So there you go. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of direction. And my final big news is I got shot number two. Yes, got my vaccine, second vaccine. So we are now on the wait period for after the second vaccine, the two weeks, uh, being super duper careful. So thank you, my friends. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, this is a glorious day to think about your word of the year. I hope you do that. Check out my website and I love you. I'll see you online.